call the uh, meeting to order for the regular meeting for Monday, April the 4th. And uh, welcome everyone. I hope everyone's well. We have a couple of colds in our office, I know, but uh, looking for any conflicts of interest amongst the council members. No, that's always good. I'm looking for the adoption of the published agenda for this evening with additions. And I, uh, I have one addition here on behalf of Councillor Bondi, who will be back shortly. Uh, she has something to talk about, uh, Spring Social. Anything else? Councillor Vokes. I, I'd raise this under new business, but I'm going to take the opportunity just as a friendly reminder. Wednesday at 1045, Donna just brought this check. And this is a check that council members gave to the Dream Team to support their out-of-town trip. So again, at 1045 at Holy Name School here in Essex, uh, I'll be presenting this check. And any colleague at council or administration want to join, you're, you're more than welcome. 45, what day? Wednesday. On Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. You want anything else? Looking for a mover and a seconder for that motion, Councillor Snively and Councillor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carried. Adoption. Adoption of minutes from the February 11th, 2016 Special Council meeting. Deputy Mayor Malash and then it was counter votes, counter votes. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. For adoption, the minutes of the March 21st regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Councillor Vokes. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7 on the agenda, reports for administration. Item 7A, planning department report number 2016-09, place finding signage in the town of Essex. Uh, report is for, report is to be received and for council's support of the recommendations contained in that report, namely that council retain a consultant for the development of a place finding sign program in design format, that council requests county of Essex to permit, sorry, that council requests that the County of Essex permit the erection of two place finding signs at the intersections of County Road 50 and Bagot Street and County Road 50 and Jackson Street. And finally, that council requests that the County of Essex accept non tourist related businesses into its place finding signage program. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Councillor Snively. Any questions? Councillor Bjorkman. Thank you, through your worship. Um, I think it's a great idea. We need to move forward with the signage um, and bring in a consultant to help us with, uh, with the signs. But I would like to uh, add to that. I, I think it would be nice if we could get, uh, it's a good project to get our youth involved in. We've, we've seen lots of place finding signage. There's lots of examples of it out there. We know what our town colors are. It would be nice if we gave an opportunity uh, to uh, our schools to come up with a, a sign uh, maybe have a contest with them, uh, along with the consultant, uh, some guidance uh, to, to generate interest with our youth uh, towards making something that's, that's personal, that's for our towns, and that we engage them in this process with, with creating the sign. Country Gagero. As the mover, I'd be willing to add that to the motion. Anything further to the motion? Nope. Chris? Through your worship, um, I think the intent, or I'm, I'm actually not I think, I know the, the intent of the report and the reason for the consultant, um, we went through the consultant process and the design process several years ago, and that's what came up with our current branding right now. Um, as far as what the request is for a consultant, the consultant's request is for the the system and the um, the philosophy on where the wayfinding signage is going to go and how it's going to be um, uh, put in place, whatnot. Not as far as the the intent wasn't, as far as the the design and the uh, um, 
the look of the site. It was more of the where's, the why's, the how, who gets in, where do we put them, uh, um, those types of things. We, we touched on that in the, in the previous uh, consultant's report, but uh, uh, it became too big of a can to handle at the time, and, and that was the, uh, um, the reason for putting it back into this now as, as this signage program uh, evolves. Under Kex, Zero. Through your worship, uh, to Mr. Nepsey, then uh, my question would be, there are many different designs out there. We obviously don't have uh, signs in place, so what is our design? Uh, I, I would, I guess, I respectfully disagree uh, that there does have to be a development of a style. Um, uh, absolutely, we have color, we have, uh, we have, um, what uh, the watermark is on our on our paper and whatnot, but I don't think there is a, a, a per se a, a design for the signs, and there are many designs out there. So I I would think that that's going to be done at the same time. Mr. Nepsey, uh, three worship. Uh, in in the previous uh, consultant's report, there were um, designs provided for those fingerboard type signs for the larger wayfinding signs. I'm not saying that we can't add it into, uh, you know, we can, we can tweak the RFP if this is a direction of council, but I think the primary, uh, the primary function for this consultant is, is more for the process and the what's and the why's and the how's, and we can have that as a, as a function maybe uh, in order to provide, uh, um, you know, the design interpretation. I think it's key that the consultant we're looking at is, is I guess not, not the artist type, but more of the function type. That's, that's. Yes, sir. So follow up to that, then uh, Councilor Bjorkman's suggestion is maybe where uh, the, uh, the high schools could come into play. A and maybe with the consultant, that would be maybe what we would task them with. I, I think that might be a good idea. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I was just responding to, in the very first line, it says the place finding sign program and design format. So I, I looked at design format and I was making signs. Um, so, um, yep, we'll be happy to use that uh, in later uh, as the progress goes. So, uh, I have no further questions with the item. Thank you. All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7B, Infrastructure and Development, Report Number 2016-02, Results of Request for Tender for the Supply and Application of Maintenance Stone for 2016, Set Report for Receipt and for Council's Concurrence with the Recommendations, including the approval of the awarding of the contract to Southwestern Sales Corporation Limited. Deputy Mayor Malash, Councilor Cancero supports. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7C, Community Services, Report Number 2016-011, April Pools Day and Community CPR Day for receipt. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Councillor Bondi. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7D, Infrastructure and Development, Report Number 2016-03, Results of Request for Tender, Improvements to Ward 1 Sanitary Sewer System, Contract Number 1, Report for receipt and for Council's concurrence with the recommendations contained, including the award of the request for tender to SLR Contracting Group Incorporated. Moved by Council votes, supported by Councilor Caxero. With question, Councilor Caxero. Through your worship, uh, I'm sure we're all anxiously waiting for this work to get started. Th this and, and the, the next report, uh, the two in conjunction, will hopefully move us forward in resolving a lot of our issues here in Ward 1. So it's good to see you come forward. Commissioner Knightley. Through your worship to uh, Chris, uh, just a question. D did we have the last two uh, heavy rains, have we had any flooding issues in, in Essex? Uh, through your worship, we've had um, various uh, flooding, overland flooding. Uh, I think that's been more of the case. I know I personally have not had or, or our, my manager of operations any basement flooding issues. I have seen some restoration vehicles around town, but we have not received any calls. So that might have been uh, uh, pump, pump, some pump failures uh, or whatnot. But um, 
you know, although we had one of the wettest marches on record, uh, we didn't have those large, intense storms that caused our previous flooding, so it's it's hard to say. The uh, further to that, Chris, uh, the disconnect program. I drove through uh, some of the subdivisions here, and I see there is still a lot of the newer homes that are hooked up. Um, uh, are we going to move forward this summer? Okay, with the student, uh, that's our plan to put somebody in place and make sure that this. This is going to be enforced? Uh, through yes, your worship, um, that's something that we've been working with the communica communications manager as long as the, uh, and the flooding advisory committee. We, 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 we see that that next step, I guess, in, in, uh, in improving our systems, both sanitary and storm, is that disconnect system. So we're going to be hitting, coinciding with the construction, um, a disconnect, a downspout disconnect media blitz as far as uh, uh, you know, some door knockers, um, reminding people that there's a subsidy program available to them, um, and, and downspout disconnects is one of those. Um, we, we didn't put students in the budget, but it is something that we're going to be looking at. So um, with the media blitz and with the subsidy program renewal, um, you know, that's, that's that next step. So yes, we're going to be uh, addressing as much as we can this year on that. Okay, I have Councillor Bonnie and then Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to know if when the contractors submit for final payment, if the, we have a mechanism in place to ensure that all the subcontractors have been paid, just because this is something that we've dealt with before and we've had a meeting with REFAC recently in Harrow. Uh, so that's what I want to make sure going forward that on, on jobs that are issued by the town that all the subtractors, all the subcontractors have been paid. And um, I want to thank our mayor for getting a great start on these petitions. I have some petitions up here for the uh, supporting the Prompt Payment Legislation Act in Ontario, which coincides with contractors and subcontractors getting paid, because we all know that's an issue. So that, that's my only question. I'm glad that we are moving ahead. And I also saw that um, in the report, the prices were coming back um, less than what we budgeted for. So that's great. I want to thank our Treasury Department for working so hard to get their budget done on time because it seems like because we got our tenders out earlier, it feels to me that we're more competitive. So, so I think that's awesome. I just want to make sure that our subcontractors are protected. Thank you. Councilor Vokes. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I don't think collectively as a council and administration we need to second guess what we're doing in terms of, of our flooding situation. If my phone at 63 South Talbot is any measuring stick, the last time we got a rain even less less significant as we got this weekend, in terms of left measurable, that, that Russ at the time of the day tried to explain to everybody about that rainfall in the storm period and how demanding it was. This storm was even more demanding. And last time, I had 128 calls right to my house, 128. This time, I didn't get one. So whatever we're doing, we're winning. There's no doubt about it, we're winning. And with the two initiations here, we'll, I like believe we're going to take it right over the top. But with that being said, I really would like to see, Chris, that student program start on the downspout disconnect because the city of Windsor abated their problem by 80% just on downspout alone. And they got the numbers to prove that. So we got to step that up a little bit in terms of that downspout program. And I would like to see it happen prior to the spring weather coming where traditionally we did get those floods. So look, we should start it now as quickly as we can, Chris, if there's some way of doing that. I know it goes through the committee. I understand that, but if we could even start putting out to the students that we're looking for somebody for their time they have to do for their credentials at school, then we should be doing that. I, I, I would like to maybe turn to Carly or Lauren in terms of what they may know in terms of students and schooling and how would that be valid for us to do that, to get students to come on board, to do that downspout disconnect program for us on a door-to-door. -door. Would that help in terms of getting their hours towards what they need to do? Would you like to say something, young lady? Uh, it may help with their community service hours for any students, say, like, in any environmental classes. If they needed more hours, you could definitely, like, contact them through the school. I know our school has a few environmental classes going on right now, and especially the, the grade 9s and 10s, they still need their hours, so they'd be mostly interested. 
Your views, Carly? I think... I think it would be more important for the grade 12s as prom's approaching. They won't be able to attend without their 40 hours, so I think we should really talk to them about it. Maybe if we come back to you, you could use uh, Lauren's. Sounds like you have a problem with your speakers. Okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else? Oh, Mr. Nepsey. Uh, Three Worship, I just want to speak to some of the things that uh, Councillor Bondi and Councillor Vokes brought up. Uh, with any construction contract, there's provisions, there's legal and, and lawful provisions as far as payment to subcontractors. Anytime a, 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 a capital works program is finished, the contractor is obligated to declare a statutory declaration uh, com, you know, um, that the job is completed, substantial completion, that is advertised in the papers. Uh, and then any sub that what that allows is a subcontractor to see that this contractor has re received substantial completion then they can go ahead and if they haven't been paid they can issue a lien uh, against the job so one thing we ask for at the end of the works for payment is that uh, they have a, a stat stack of liens and liabilities that they have to prove to us there are no liens and, and whatnot on the job so it's something that's been enacted and in place um, uh, I don't know since I've been doing uh, these tenders in business it's just it's 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 how how construction works so um, if the subcontractor is aware of what's going on and 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 um, you know following the newspaper and the works and, and can even you know contact the municipality as far as where the the works are at there is no reason that any subcontractor uh, working for a, a general contractor for the town of Essex should not be paid um, on that note I guess and, and a second point to Councillor Bondi um, the works, although under budget as far as the engineering's recent prices, are technically over budget in terms of what we originally budgeted in September. So we are over budget in terms of, of and I can speak to this more when the second report comes up, in terms of what we originally budgeted, but um, the result is an enhancement in the scope and the details of the work. When we, when we really got, I mean, we pushed Stantec at the time for an estimate of works. Uh, to use for our budget. Uh, when we got into detail design and um, enhancing exactly what we needed in terms of improvements to the sanitary system, that expanded the scope. Um, we got great pricing, but our scope is larger than what we want. So uh, just to clarify that. Um, and, and then back to the, I guess, downspout disconnect program. Uh, again, that's something, you know, I saw the final door knocker that we're looking to promote uh, the disconnection of downspouts. It was on my desk this afternoon, so we'll be looking to get that out within the next week or, or whatnot. Um, I can sit and huddle up with the departments and with Donna as far as uh, staffing and finances with respect to the potential of hiring a, um, a student dedicated to that or if it, see if it's something we can work into the, the student base we already have right now. So we'll, we'll, we'll explore that. Thank you, sir. Anything further? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Item 7E, Infrastructure and Development, Report Number 2016-04. Results of request for tender. Contract number two for the improvements to Ward 1 Sanitary Sewer System. For receipt and Council's concurrence with the recommendation, including that the request for tender be awarded to J&J &J LaPera. Moved by Councillor. Snivelin, supported by Councillor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 8, correspondence, Township of Montague. Support for Blue Waters Resolution, requesting incentives for physician recruitment for receipt. Moved by Councillor Bjorkman, supported by Councillor Bondi. Questions? Deputy Mayor Malash and then Councillor Caxero. That's for receipt only? Oops. Thank you. Okay. Contra Cactero. Through your worship to the mover and seconder, is there any reason why we're not supporting? Either one of you is like to respond? Contra Berkman. Yeah, the, uh, the recommendation was just to receive and receive the information. As far as, as, far as I'm concerned, it's worth receiving. 
Deputy Mayor Malash. Um, I, would con I would be concerned if we wanted to support it because we are not considered a rural designation any longer for uh, medical doctor coverage. So it would not be to our benefits. It would be to the benefit of these communities that are further to the north and so on, but would not be a benefit to us here in Essex County. Anything further? On favor of the motion. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 9, committee meeting minutes. That the committee meeting minutes in items 9A and 9B be received and adopted as presented. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Questions? Councillor Vokes. In terms of uh, the transportation, thank you, Councillor Bjorkman. In terms of the uh, transportation museum, what was there? Was there an original request 5,000? I think it was more than that, wasn't it? Not? We're only doing A and B. No. That's C. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? We're only doing A and B. That is C. We're still here. We're, we're adopting oh, items 9A and, and 9B. I'm what, sorry, that's twice nine, tonight. I got ahead of myself, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Any further? All in favor of the motion? Motion okay. carries. Item 9C, Finance Committee meeting minutes from March 24, 2016 for receipt, adoption with the recommendations to be approved as recommended. Moved by Councillor Caxera, supported by Councillor Vokes. Questions? Councillor Vokes? I got no questions. I just, no. Um, I all, just, all in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Motion carried. Nope. All in favor? No, I do have questions, actually. Okay. We well, haven't got enough anyways to... Approve, pass it, so count revoked. Yeah, thank you. How much was your original request? 25000 per, per year. For this year. For this year. Yep. But we gave 5000 yes. And we gave, and we gave 5000 for every year after that, right? For 16, 17, 18? Mrs. Hunter. Three, Your Worship, their request was for $25,000 per year, starting with this year. What the committee has recommended to council is five thousand dollars a year for the next three years. Okay. And oh, council folks, did did they not did not Mr. Bergman and Mr. Uh, Mulder send over their books? Because I got to tell you, people, the transportation museum is in trouble, and we're in the we're in the other issues talking about other opportunities with inside the municipality talking about doing it. This place is going to close. I'm telling you right now, the Essex, the Transportation Museum is not going to, even though we gave 5000 why do you think they asked for 25000 They didn't ask for 25000 because they just wanted to reach in our pocket and take the money with no apparent reason for it. They're, they're holding more car shows this year just selling 50-50 tickets, trying to get money. That, that one of something, it won't see 17. It's not going to see it. And I can't believe we, we turned that down, people. That's a golden nugget for us. That's probably one of our biggest tourist attractions we have. And we just shot them down. Only the re recommendation came from the Finance Committee, Council of Oaks. There will be a vote here. Maybe you've changed enough minds that I will get so. past. I certainly hope so. Mrs. Hunter, did you have something to say you were going to say? Yeah, Your Worship, nothing further to that. I just wanted to go through a couple of these, if I may, in terms of what they requested and what uh, the recommendations are were to provide. Um, some of the grants are the status quo in terms of the Essex Community Services and the retirees, the Access County Youth... The Center for Harrow uh, is a 20% reduction from the prior year, which is, is continuing on that commitment to phase it out over time. Um, the Harrow Early Immigrant Research had asked for 2500 The committee is recommending 1500 but if there's monies needed for student support, that until they are able to get out an application for grants next year, that we would come up with the, an additional 1000 that they need for that student. Um, 
The Kingsville Essex Band has asked for 10,000, uh, comprised of a cash grant in, in, in uh, kind for facility rental. The committee is recommending the same as last year, 5,000 cash grant, 2,500 uh, facility rental. Again, the Canadian Transportation Museum at 5,000 for the next three years. And in terms of the tourism grants, uh, explore the shore with a phase out over the next three years with 2016. 1,517 and 1,000 in 2018. So I just wanted to give you kind of some of that history. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Snively? Through, through your worship. Councillor um, Snively, can I just have a second? Councillor Volk sure. still says he has the floor, so, okay. Thank you. I, I, um, you know, again, I, I hear all that, but... but None of those opportunities and none of those organizations draw them, the, the people tourism-wise that they draw. Like if anybody, I, I, I respectfully, I, I see Omar out there. He will tell you, you go to a car show out there, it is packed with people. Packed with people. And, and it's, a, it's a golden nugget for us, even though we don't hang our Town of Essex sign directly on it. Without it, we're... we're we're even at, we, we're going to step so far back. And, the, and, and this is not an issue they come to us. If you remember, people, the parade, the Christmas parade that we walked in two years ago, I believe. I, I, I gathered with a few of the councillors, and I said, the museum's in trouble. They're very much in trouble, and they've been struggling and, and hit and miss ever since then. And they're just going to throw the towel in. And I'm, I'm asking Council of the Day to let's figure a way to step up and give a little more. Because we're going to drive by that building and the gate's going to be closed and you're going to be seeing car carriers hauling vehicles out of there. I'll give it to you in writing. Because Harry Bergman and Mickey Mulder are not the type of gentlemen to ask for, for $25,000 if they don't need it. I know they said very clearly to me, Randy, we will give the town whatever the town needs to look at our books. And the reason they did that is because they're heading to a financial disaster. And I get it, we can't support everything that comes along, but this is a little, little unique in structure, very unique in structure compar compared to other things we, one would suggest we give to. Thank you, sir. Councilor Sanity. Through uh, you, Your Worship, uh, to Councillor Vokes, um, when was the last time you talked to uh, Harry or out there? I was there yesterday, okay, there, there was an announcement yesterday there. All the buildings, I don't know if you're aware of, but all the buildings in the back there have all been redone with a the grant. They just received a huge amount of money to do that. I'm aware of that. Okay. But the grant money doesn't okay. talk... Okay, now this isn't a discussion between you. We're coming no. through here for all of us. Through, okay, through so your worship, just I, I just... Let Councilor Snively finish. I, I just want Council to be aware that they did receive, I think it was $200,000 right around, of, of grant money, and they redid all the buildings in the back. I, I was there yesterday and went through them all. So. Thank you for that. Council rules. Thank you, Your Worship. But that money, that funding, that grant money is, is not traditional day-by-day -day business one. And that's grants they applied for. Unfortunately, somebody else realized that they need that money in order to enhance their opportunities, and they give it to them. Or we're not. That's why they give it to them. Because they knew they were in dire need of doing something out there. But we're not giving it. They did, we're not. We haven't yet. If, if you stop the discussion... We will decide whether we're going to or we're not going to. Okay? Anything further? All in favor of this motion? Can I ask for a sure can. Councillor Bokes? Councillor Borkman? Favor. Councillor Caxero. Support. Councillor Snively. Support. Deputy Mayor Malosh. Support. Mayor McDermott. Support. And Councillor Bondi. Support. I'd also like to make a motion on this issue. 
when the time it'll, is appropriate. Yep, it'll just give you the With the respect vote. to the motion on the floor, uh, recorded vote. Um, Councillor Vokes opposed. Councillor Morkman supported. Councillor Caxeros supported. Councillor Snively supported. Deputy Mayor Malosh supported. And Mayor McDermott, McDermott supported. And Councillor Bondi supported. Uh, motion carries six to one. Councillor Bondi? Thank you. I, I supported the motion because it had all of our grants in one motion, and I think that it's important that we pass our grants and let but the organizations that we help get on with their daily business. That being said, I would like to invite the administrators of Heritage Village to our council to give us uh, a brief uh, presentation on their updated financial situation. I did know that Councillor Snively went there yesterday, but I didn't know what it was about, so I would love them to come give us an update on their financial situation and uh, how best we can help them. It might not be through giving dollars, it might be through you know, a marketing on their website, or, or I don't know. There might be some other ways that we can help them without just giving them the money. I do see that there's a little bit left in that budget. There's $9,699. So I'm not saying that we could earmark it for any one organization, but there's a little bit of a cushion there. So I'd just like to make a motion that we, or maybe we don't even need a motion, but have some direction that we uh, invite the invitation for them to come and talk to our council collectively and see if we can uh, brainstorm. And if they choose not to, they choose not to. Well, I, I'm asking them to do updated. I didn't know that they just got another grant for $200,000. That's a pretty big deal. So things are changing there. Yeah, I think any one of us can just mention that to him, Councillor Bundy. Yeah. You know. Thanks. Councillor Snively? Yeah, through your worship, uh, I don't think the, uh, unless I missed it, the uh, question wasn't answered. Did they come to us with their financial statements? Were they presented to us? Through you, Your Worship, they were part of their application package. They provided all their financial information. Okay. That was presented to the committee as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Item 10A, January 2016, Bank Payments Report for ratification as submitted. By Councilor Bjorkman, second by Deputy Mayor Malage. Questions? All in favor? Motion carried. Item 10B, February 2016, Bank Payments Report for ratification as submitted. Moved by Councilor Caxero, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 11, under new business, I believe our CAO, Russ Phillips, would like to introduce the newest member of administration. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, through you, your worship. Um, I'd like to welcome and introduce Tara McGowan uh, with us. Tara is with us this evening. Uh, she's the uh, newly appointed manager of human resources with the town of Essex. Welcome, Tara. This is Tara's first day with us, and we've uh, put her through her paces already, so she's, uh, she's had a full day. Didn't realize that they were all 14 and 15 hour days, but uh, that <laughs> tomorrow will be better. We, we promise you. But uh, Tara comes to us from uh, more recently from Sault Ste. Marie, and uh, has a wealth of human resource and administrative experience, and uh, we're really looking forward to having her join the team. Welcome. We're going to let her say a couple of words by the looks of it, but uh, I'd also like to say she's originally from Kingsville. No? Oh, her parents live in Kingsville. Sorry. That's right. I was just going to say thank you. Go ahead, dear. Well, you're, work, you're welcome on behalf of all of us. We're looking forward to working with you, believe me. Thanks. Councillor Snively, under new business, property standards. All right, thanks. Through your worship, this might take a few minutes. Uh, this has been an issue that council has been struggling with for years, and I mean years. Um, I'm getting so many complaints from our ratepayers out there on property standards. People living beside somebody that decide they're going to get in the scrap business and fill their front yard full of scrap. 
Uh, it doesn't matter how many times we warn them, they turn right around again and we have a continuing problem. I know um, West Tejero, just give you a few examples. West Tejero, this gentleman bought this farm and he's in total scrap business out there and this has been going on for at least 14 years because when I was a mayor back in 2001, we had that issue and we tried to clean it up since. So I don't know how we're going to clean it up as a council, but it's got to be cleaned up because it's not fair to a resident living out there in a nice, well-kept home, nice yard with somebody living beside them that don't give a damn about them. It's got to stop. And just give you some examples. Colchester, Councillor Coxero, he's aware of this guy. He's got pallets all around his house, junk all over the place, and all the homes around it are very neatly kept. It's not fair. So I would like to make some kind of recommendation where a resident gets a written warning, and thanks to Russ, Russ give me a report what they did in Manitoba, and we should all read that report. There's a lot of good things in there. They get a written warning. The second time we go there, if it's not cleaned up, they get a $500 fine, and if it's not cleaned up after that, we go in, we clean it up, it goes on our taxes. Because I don't know, I don't know how to cure this problem. It's been going on, and it's got to stop. You see these beautiful homes go out to Colchester along the lake on Adelaide. Okay, there's beautiful waterfront homes there, and you have two or three that are just disgusting. And it's, somehow we've got to clean it up. And I don't know, uh, with, with Danny or with uh, Kevin and Wayne, if they have enough hours in their schedule to do it, or do we have to hire somebody part-time and they do it two days a week, I'm sure the revenue coming back would cover the cost of that, that employee. But this has got to be cleaned up. This, this, this has gone way too far. Way too far. And I, I don't know if uh, council would support me, but uh, I, I'd like to make a motion. It's very easy to clean up as long as there, it's being enforced. And another one is, another problem is here too. We have a, we have a business in Harold. We've been on them for a long, long, long time, okay? He has steel siding flapping, broken windows. We've been on this guy for ages to fix this up. Guess what? It's not happening. So I think we have to enforce our bylaw. Thank you. I'll be the first to say I would support your motion to that effect when it happens. Oh, Mr. Nepsey? Okay, Councilor Vokes. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Chris. Um, look at, uh, in terms of property standards, I've been on council for 12 years, and I think every year in that 12 years, it's going on 13, every year in that period, I talk about property standards somewhere. And you're right. You're 100%, Councilor Snively. You're right. And it's long overdue. It reminds me when we had the problem, when the recommendation come from the uh, Handicap Accessibility Committee, the physical disabled people, in terms of having handicapped parking spots and people parking in them. I think our fine of the day was $150, and then we, we said, well, okay, how do we make it more forceful? And at that time, I said, well, it's easy. Let's make the fines $3,000. And everybody looked at me like I fell out of my tree. But without that initiation of that enforcement, which is, is nothing, it doesn't matter. You could put $100,000 on it because it just lets people know you're firm in your beliefs. So I think we have to look at the monetary consideration in terms of fines on property standards and the duration we give them. And when we move in and clean it up. Because property standards is a huge, huge issue that just keeps getting shuffled to the left for whatever reason, not going up front and center with it. And I, if it was independently up to me, there would be a 14-day a cleanup period and then there would be a, a $2,000, fine on top of it. Because people would take it serious. And un until you implement something where they know that these peoples in this administration sitting at this bar are real in what they're talking about, then it's redundant, wasted energy. 
and we got to step it up a little bit. And we can't worry about somebody confronting us in Tim Hortons because we put a $3,000 fine in place. Because that's the person who's got the junk cars in their yard. And you better be standing up and taking them on. And that's our problem. Simple as that. Simple as that. So we need enforcement. We need mon a good, strong monetary consideration on fines. And we need to let our, our inspectors know they need to start stepping it up. Mr. Nepsey? Yeah, through your worship, uh, I think we've all, you've all touched on, on things that I've experienced, even myself, over the, the last eight years. Um, property standards is a, is, a, is a touchy matter and, it, and is a gray instance. And you're absolutely right, Councillor Vokes, is um, we can only uh, enact the bylaw within the toolbox we have. Uh, the toolbox was rewritten, the, the standards bylaw was rewritten, um, I believe, three or four years ago. Uh, there's a process that goes through it. There's the, um, the ability to appeal. It, it can drag out, absolutely. Um, what I would suggest um, is that um, Council um, have administration do a report with respect to reviewing that bylaw. I can work with Robert and the, the building department and offer um, suggestions on how we move forward with respect to that bylaw, incorporating the report that you had talked about, Councillor Snavely, as well as um, looking at those time periods. Um, and then furthermore, um, alternatives or options in moving forward with respect to um, being more proactive, um, whether that means additional staffing, part-time staffing, a different focus. So um, if you can... Um, I guess leave that with me and my department. I'll, I'll work to get you something back so that we have a, a plan to move forward. So, Thank you very much, sir. Okay, I have uh, Deputy Mayor Malash, Counter Cat Chair, and Counter Snively. Yes, through you, Your Worship. Uh, um, I believe that there's uh, property standard issues throughout the entire community. It's in rural Essex as well. It's not. It's not to, it doesn't have to be just next to a, a house that's, uh, you know, big and beautiful. If you've got neighbors, uh, regardless of where your house is or, or what size it is or of what standard it is, uh, to have someone that lives close by that's causing, uh, let's say, uh, animal infestation or rat infestation, and quite often that will happen in rural areas, uh, you know, if you let your properties go. So... Um, I would say that we need to take a look at this across our entire community, and uh, I would I would certainly um, support whatever uh, whatever we come up with here to uh, try and be more vigorous with our uh, property standards. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Country Cagero. Through your worship, um, certainly I agree. Um, Going back to uh, not this past budget, but uh, the, our first budget, this term of council, um, maybe uh, the balance of council doesn't remember, but I, I brought forward uh, the notion of putting some money in the budget with regards to this issue. I've spoken to Kevin Carter at length about this. The issue that the uh, that our building officials who who double as our bylaw enforcement officers have is. It's great to have a bylaw, uh, even a bylaw with teeth. The problem they run into is the first time that somebody that is near and dear to somebody on council gets nabbed for something, we're at their, at their heels saying, oh, come on, you've got to give this guy a break. And, and that came directly from our bylaw enforcement officers. So we can have the bylaw, but we have to allow our employees to do their job. Uh, the instance out in Colchester that Councillor Snyder was discussing or talking about with regards to the pallets, yes, the guy is a repeat offender. It's been cleaned up. It's gone through the process. And what happens is the guy knows the process better than us. Once he's gone through the process, he continues or he, he starts the process over again. And he has his his amount of time to, to, go, to go through uh, with having stuff there and getting told he's got to remove it and then having the appeal process. So w we just do not allow our employees to, um, to do their job, basically, is the, the bottom line. The money that I was asking to have put in the budget two years ago, or a year and a half ago, was money because there's another process that can be entered into 
It takes a long time. It takes money into the courts. But what happens is, and I, I don't know the name of it, uh, Mr. Nepsey might be able to help me out with this, um, what the process allows, or, or what, what the, uh, uh, yeah, the process would allow is, it would go to court, and there's an injunction, I believe, placed on the property. So if the proponent does this again, the proponent goes to jail. Okay, so we can go through that, but it costs money. And I mentioned that, and it, it's funny that you know, everybody's kind of agreeing around the table, but it didn't gain support a year ago. So I'm glad to hear that there may be, be, uh, may be some support for this now, and I would just suggest that whatever we do, at the end of the day, let's stick to what we say we're going to do and allow our employees to do their job. Sure. Councillor Schneider. Through your worship, uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Coxero. But, uh, again, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up that property west of Harrell. And, Bill, you know it. It's been 12 years to 15 years I've been on that, and I get the same answer. The same answer. We're looking into it. We're going to take care of it, Councillor. We're, lo we're looking into it. We're going to take care of it. It's going to be cleaned up. Well, I'll tell you one thing. 12, 15 years later, it's still there. I think the only way to correct this problem is a good, hefty fine after a warning. They get a good, hefty fine, and if they turn around and do it again, they get another good, hefty fine. It's, it's going to decrease. Believe me, it will decrease, Chris. I think that's the only way to go. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you to, uh, to Donna. During uh, this last budget, we had $250,000 that we worked with, and I think now we're down to around 100000 Does that 100000 still exist? We have around that much? Through your worship, yes, it is still okay. very well. And from what I remember in Councillor Caxero, th there was around 30000 that we hemmed and hawed about putting in the budget for court cases against property standards. I would be prepared to kind of earmark in my mind that we would set aside that 30000 because during this last budget, budget session I did say like where did that money go and then we said well we're not doing that now which I feel like we need to do I think we need to put some teeth in our bylaw so just personally I, I would like to see 30,000 kind of just earmarked for court cases we know if we go after them it's going to cost money and we have to get that money somewhere we're already into uh, we're already into April so you know one fourth of the year is already gone so it'll be a little bit before we get some uh, some action but uh, I, I agree. I see an issue. I just sent an email about the uh, one of the buildings in Harrow. The picture that I took was in August, and the, the building is still the same. So it, it's definitely an issue that I want to see cleaned up, and I think small things like that can bring a lot of uh, pride in our uh, municipality. Thank you. Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Worship. I think we can really summarize by, I don't know if it, it's through a direction, but we should work with the, 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 you know, obviously Chris and his team on guiding us through when they get out in the field what it is they're missing to make an enforceable and then get that as a baseline opportunity and then tweak it from there. But I think that's where we need to start. We need to start with our bylaw enforcement, Kevin and, and, and Wayne, to say to us, if we had these opportunities, you'd see a significant difference because we're just sitting here right now you know, throwing stuff in the air, trying, but that would be a guiding point for us to move from there. And I, I would, and if Larry wanted to make that a motion to do that, I would second that in terms of doing that because it would certainly get it started by far and then continue to work with it until it's concluded. Thank you, sir. Anything further? Councillor Snively. I would make a motion to direct to Chris to come up with a report how we're going to enforce it and I personally I would like to see a good hefty fine after a warning so I and and that's what I want to see I want to see a warning I want to see a fine okay and then clean up and I'm going to make that a motion I'll make that a motion thank you to the motion discussion Councilor Cactero through your worship to uh, Mr. Nepsey, uh, is, is there uh, procedures we have to follow with regards to property standards from a municipal standpoint? 
uh, I realize that there's uh, there's suggestion that this is what we're going to do, but there's I believe there's a process that we have to follow. Correct? Uh, through you, uh, through your worship, yes. There's there are certain rules that we have to follow, and that'll come that'll come out in the report as well. It'll give you an understanding of the process of what we can and can't do, and and uh, the options of, of where council can move forward. Okay, finish, Bill. Yep. Councilor Snively, to the motion now. You have a motion on the floor, don't forget. Yeah. You made the motion, why don't you wait till the end, Bill? Larry, see if anyone else wants to say anything. Anyone else to the motion? Okay, it's your last chance now. Councilor Snively. I, 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 just, I just want to make this clear. You're, you're, you're telling me uh, we might not be able to do this, Chris? Is that what you're saying to me? Uh, through your worship, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just okay. saying I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, provide to you, uh, as we do everything here, that, um, you know, ever, all the options surrounding it, and, and then okay. you guys can move forward with the direction. But I, I'm still going to go with my motion, and I had a second. Thank you. Councilor Brooks. Due respect to your worship, if it if it you find it redundant that I asked a question, as I seen in your gestures there, then I'll with retract and I'll shut. No, my go mind. ahead. I gave you the floor. Go okay. ahead. Thank you, but I would appreciate a simple, either yes or no. Uh, Chris, would there be opportunity somehow to get that report just as quickly as we can to move on it? What would the time frame be looking like to get that report to us? Recognizing. Uh, through your worship, uh, it's something I'll, uh, I've already emailed uh, both Kevin and Wayne, and uh, I'll set up a meeting this week, and we'll uh, endeavor to get it on the next council report or council agenda. I can't make any promises, yeah. but it'll come as soon as possible. So the, the, the only reason I say that, Chris, respectfully, is because outside of flooding, this should be a nut, this should be the second priority. That property standard issue. It's all over. It's an epidemic. Okay. Anyone else who hasn't spoken to the motion on a shot? Okay. No, all in favor. Motion carries, 100 percent. Your Worship, item 11B is Councillor Bondi's new business items. Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, was talking to uh, Mr. Sweet about our annual uh, town cleanups, and he suggested that April 30th we should earmark in all of our wards to do a garbage cleanup. And uh, we can invite the high school students out and let them know that they can get community hours. And uh, looking for last year, I was lucky to have DPM Insurance and Harrow sponsor lunch at the Legion in Harrow. I don't know if, uh, if I'll approach them there this year. If, I will if I don't get any other offers. But um, perhaps, Donna, if, if that doesn't come from a sponsorship, could that be used as council discretionary funds? A lunch for the volunteers? Through, through your worship, I think that would be something that would be would be qualified in the sense that it is for community effort. Okay. All right. Thank you. So that's that's about it. Unless uh, unless Mr. Sweet has anything else to uh, to add, maybe we can get some media notices out about the the garbage cleanup. Douglas, through your worship, yes, we'll be doing it Saturday, April thirtieth, nine thirty, eleven thirty. Um, in all four wards, so we'll be looking for volunteers with any media releases, but uh, we'll set out the location, same as last year, at Colchester Park, the Gregor Community Centre, the Harrow Colchester Community Centre, and the Essex train station, so hopefully see as many out as possible. And rain or, rain or shine. Thank you. Councillor Bondi, uh, new business item, Harrow Petrocan Station. Thank you. I would just like to, to have a, a public update uh, from our administration on the Harrow Petro Canada station because whenever I walk up town, people say, how can the town let it stay like that? Isn't it contaminated? And I'm just like, no, it's not. You know, um, you know, we're seeing if we can use it as a green space. And everybody's coming with, to me with a bazillion ideas of, of what they think is realistic, but at the end of the day, there's only so much that the town can do. So it would be helpful if administration can kind of clear the air about what, it, what we are proposing on that site, if you may, Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir, Mr. Phillips. Yeah, thank you. Through you, Your Worship, um, it is a private property, and typically with any private property like that, the owners uh, are given the opportunity to take whatever measures they have to 
the environmental concerns that exist on the property, if there are, and we're not aware to the degree that the owners are. Suncor is dealing with them. In the most recent email that we received, and I, w this was circulated to Council a while back, they indicate that they will likely be proceeding with remedial excavation to remove as much of the soil and groundwater at that site as possible. Uh, they are taking those measures. Uh, unfortunately, in a situation like this, and, and I, we've discussed this with Council and Administration, it's the aesthetics that are left. It's the, it's the look of the site that will be left in less than an, an enviable position where the community is looking at uh, either Jersey barricades and fence and gravel surface. Uh, the, what the administration has recommended to you is that once, if and when they've resolved with all the remedial, uh, the works that are done, there is the potential that the town could enter a lease agreement and we could do, take some aesthetic measures and put in some grass or something on the surface. Uh, the concern that we have with that, though, is that there's long-term liabilities associated with long-term leases. And if we take on a long-term lease, we could be the owners of that liability. So it's something that we need to really look at from a legal perspective as well as one of uh, the environmental concerns. So I, I, at this point in time, I, I, I really, it is an unfortunate situation, but we've really got to let Suncor do its thing, uh, finish up, and then determine what actions we take from there. But it is something we will follow up on in deter determining the, the long-term liability. Thank you, sir. You want to continue? Sure. 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 So in, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. In uh, Colchester, there is a really, really bad looking, uh, it's not even a community mailbox, it's an old Canada Post mailbox, the ones where you put your own lock on, so therefore it's not a community mailbox. And uh, just thinking about the tourism in that area, I took a picture of it and through some of the suggestions um, from our Deputy Mayor and our CEO did put in a work order as well to Canada Post. I did speak with the Harrow Postmaster and I did speak with uh, Tracy Ramsey's office. So Canada Post is aware of the situation of this mailbox, but I think going forward, I also spoke with Jay Affleck that our council, our town might want to relocate this mailbox because if we are doing a trail along County Road 50, this post, post box might be better situated on um, Sullivan Street. So I think that rather than let them put a new mailbox there where we don't want, the, want it, let's talk to them now and see if we can locate the mailbox maybe, you know, where the trailer parking is, maybe on the corner where the fence is on the corner by Sullivan Street. I just don't know. I just, rather than them put in a new mailbox and go through all the effort of grounding a new mailbox before the planning is done and before our trail is created, I think that it would be a good time to contact Canada Post and try to work with them and see what we can do. So just looking for everybody's uh, thoughts on that. Councilor Caxero. Through your worship, um, back when I think this first came, uh, came to light and you sent out an email, uh, I responded, uh, there is a, another one of those mailboxes on County Road 50 on the north side uh, across from our property. Um, I was kind of of the opinion if we're going to get rid of one, I think we should get rid of both of them, come up with a location central to those two boxes um, to be able to put in the, that new type of community uh, mailbox that they did on Sydenham Street across from uh, the Bar and Grill. Uh, I used to have, uh, I, I get my mail there, I used to have one of those old green mailboxes that you put your own lock on and I petitioned quite a few times to have that um, looked at and, and upgraded because the majority of them are no longer like that. They're the, the community mailboxes that have uh, just a key. Um, and it took some time to do that. Canada Post drags their feet on these. Um, it wasn't until there was some vandalism done. There was the legs broken off these green mailboxes and they were on their back for some time that finally they decided to put in the new style. So I, I'm certainly in favor of something like this. I'd like to see that other one included because it's a single standalone, there's probably a half a dozen uh, mailboxes in there. Uh, I assume the one you're speaking of is another single. So uh, it, it certainly is something that I think we'd like to see cleaned up in that area exactly for, for that, that aspect of, uh, of visibility in, in that area. Thank you, sir. Councillor Ropes. 
Geez, we're, we're really segueing off our last conversation on our property standards. Just send them a letter saying your mailbox isn't meeting property standards. So I'm serious about that. It either meets property standards or it doesn't, and it doesn't. Send them a letter. Tell them they got 21 days to replace it. Why are we reinventing the wheel here? Can we do that, please? Can we do that, Chris? Well, let's find out. Send them a letter. They got 21 worship. days. Go ahead, Chris. Through your worship, it's something we can take a look at. I don't necessarily know that a dilapidated mailbox would fall under the, the, the guidelines of our current property standards bylaw, but we'll take a look. Yeah, do it. Let's do it. Thank you, sir. And Sherry, you have one more. Yes. Go on it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would just like to invite council and anybody else that is interested in attending to the Spring Social for our MPP. It is April 29th at the Verde Club in Amherstburg, and it's just a nice light evening with uh, desserts and hors d'oeuvres, and uh, there's a coffee bar and cash bar as well. And it's at the Verde Club, so if anybody wants tickets, it's uh, $50 a person. You can also buy a table if you're interested. But uh, it's meet and greet with uh, Taras and uh, other special guests, which can be us if we want to go. So just uh, opening the invitation to members of council and the public. Thank you. Okay. Item 13A, bylaws for third and final reading this evening. 13A1, bylaw number 1494 to authorize execution of a lease agreement between the town of Essex and Robbie Clee carrying on business of South Shore Fitness. And could we do all five of these? These are all looking for the third passing. Could we do all five? And if you have a question with any one of them, just bring it up, okay? And that was moved by Councillor Cachero and Councillor Snively. Okay, so here's an opportunity if you would like to discuss any one of these bylaws. One through five. Yeah. Oh, Councillor Bjarkman. Thank you, through your worship. Um, number four, the uh, the bylaw for the fire services. Uh, I'm glad we got a chance to come back to this one because uh, I went through it pretty fast last week. There's uh, a lot of work went into it to uh, uh, Chief Arnell. Um, just looking at the, the data that was in here, we were talking about what our fire department does for us now and, and, and the services they provide. You know, 33% of their time is spent actually fighting fires and the rest of their time is, is spent servicing our, our, our township and you know providing services in all kinds of different ways. Uh, the training that they do uh, so that when they actually do get out to a fire uh, everything is automatic and, and the, the work that they're putting in. I thought it was uh, really good too. There's uh, Schedule A which is in there um, talks about the mandate, the vision, the primary goals and it also has an explanation of the core services uh, that we provide. And I think, uh, I think it would be good to have that put on our website um, as opposed to just an entire uh, fire services uh, um, bylaw, but to show the people of the town of Essex what they can expect from their fire service and what it is that they do and what they're getting for, for that investment. So I think it's, uh, it's really good. And if, Chief, if you wanted to say anything about it, uh, I think it's a really uh, a great job there. Thank you, sir. Chief Arnell, comment? Thanks. Through you, Your Worship, uh, thank you so much for those comments. Uh, this is going to be a living document, and we're going to use uh, Schedule D to update council on any time we uh, update our training with our members and where the fire service is so that, uh, you know, it, it gives us a living document to look at to be able to adjust the service that mayor and council would like to see the fire service provide for the community. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other ones? Okay, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Item 13B, bylaws for first and second reading this evening. Bylaw number 1502 being a bylaw to enter into an agreement between the corporation of the town of Essex and its non-union employees. Moved by Councillor Cacciaro, supported by Councillor Bjorken. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. And bylaw number 1503 to confirm the proceedings of this April 4th regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Volk, supported by Councillor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. 
Thank you, Councillor Caxero. Motion to adjourn, supported by Councillor Snively. Okay, all in favor. Motion carries. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you, young ladies.